Testing plays a key role in our fight against COVID-19. It helps to identify people who are infected so they can self-isolate and stop the disease from spreading further. Every week, millions of swabs can be taken at test sites and homes throughout the UK. But what happens after you've taken a swab and sent it off to be processed at one of our national network of laboratories? Kieran, at our Lighthouse Lab in Cheshire, has the inside story. So our samples arrive from regional testing centres, satellite sites, mobile testing units, care homes or in a home test box. All the samples are securely packed and they're contained in an outer box. Each sample has its own unique barcode, which anonymizes the patient, but it lets us identify them at a later stage, and this is on both their sample tube and the outer packaging. So once they've arrived to us on site, we then take the samples out of the box, and we record the time that they arrive to us on site. At this stage, we check for leaks. That's just to ensure that it's safe for our staff to work with. If we do find a leak, we then scan that sample as defective, and the individual whose sample it is has to retake their test. Once the samples have been unboxed, we then transport them to the lab. So we transport them to the lab in sealed packaging and containers. When we get them in the lab, an operator who's been working in a Category 2 biosafety cabinet will take them out of their bag. In the cabinet, we have air circulating around, which goes through a very fine filter. And that means that no virus can escape. At this stage, we check again for leaks and any missing swabs. At this stage, we're going to make the samples safe. Viable samples are unbagged and they're wrapped for processing. An operator will then either manually process them or one of our automated robots will process them and that's transferring the liquid from the tube into one of our deep well plates that contains a lysis buffer. This lysis buffer deactivates and breaks apart the virus and it also stabilises the virus's genetic material. There's also beads which are in this buffer which will bind the genetic material we need for the next stage. At this stage, we're going to extract the genetic material from the virus. So after 15 minutes in the buffer, the virus is deactivated and the sample is prepared for RNA extraction. This separates the genetic material from the rest of the virus. And we have a machine that will then extract that genetic material using the beads that are in the buffer and a magnet to hold them. The genetic material is extracted and we then look for the specific COVID-19 genes. So we combine the extracted RNA with a PCR master mix. And we put this onto our qPCR machine to analyze it. At this stage, to return a result, we look for amplification of three specific COVID-19 genes. The next stage is that we have to double check all of our controls. So once a run's complete, we have a data team who will look over all the results and they're going to check that all the controls have worked and that's going to ensure that the results we give out are both valid and accurate. So once we know the controls are right and accurate and valid, we can upload our results to the National Pathology Exchange, which we call MPEX. From there, Test and Trace can then match the sample barcode to the subject record and that will return a positive, negative or inconclusive test result. Once we've uploaded the results, we then notify the authorities. So we send the results to the NHS Business Service Authority and they forward the results onto the individual's GP so that it can be matched onto their patient record. Individuals will get their result, so they'll be notified by a text or email, and that will tell them if they're positive or negative, and if they have to self-isolate for a period. Millions of COVID-19 swabs have been tested to date. To find out more about the important work we do, visit the website shown on screen.